Hello my soccer universe. Uh, it was not easy to decide what should I wear in the end. Yeah, none of the teams that I support, although largely good results for them, nothing really that convincing. So I almost didn't know what to put on. It was then between Sweden and Switzerland and I decided to go with the new jersey that I've worn this week, but you didn't see me wearing it in, in, in a video. I absolutely love the Switzerland jersey with the cross down the center. It's a really nice one. And yeah, Switzerland got a scrappy 2-0 win in Georgia, I think. From what I uh, read, it was 0-0 halftime and then Zuba and uh, Zakaria made the two goals uh, to put them ahead. So we start in Group D. Uh, here, um, the other game in this group was also a scrappy win. We actually saw some highlights. I didn't see highlights of Georgia, Switzerland. Uh, Ireland winning 1-0 uh, in Gibraltar. Uh, notable for a few things. First of all, Ireland had, especially at the, at the end of the first half, quite a few chances to make the goal and would have been another jersey to wear, on honestly, but only 1-0 at Gibraltar didn't seem right to me either. Uh, right after the half, Gibraltar had a huge chance um, that was saved by the goalkeeper and right thereafter uh, Ireland gets the goal. That was the first thing notable, many chances for Ireland, huge chance for uh, Gibraltar. Gibraltar? Gibraltar. Gibraltar is how we say it in German, so Gibraltar is pro the proper. I'm always in between somewhere. A anyway, but I had to check actually the location of the stadium. Gibraltar is not that big and it's next to the airstrip. Literally next to the airstrip of the uh, airport in Gibraltar. And so if you look at the left side, especially the, the goal where Ireland scored, where they played in the first, uh, second half, um, you could see airplanes landing and uh, leaving. An unbelievable sight. And on the other side, you have the, the huge rock. I mean, I love big stadiums because they have a great atmosphere, but when a stadium is open like that and you see a little bit the surrounding, it's always cool. And now I'm, I just imagine huge uh, national teams. I mean, this time around, it's uh, Switzerland, Denmark is not uh, the top of the crop, but it's pretty cool to imagine that. Uh, big national teams are playing in such small stadiums. That is literally why I love the European uh, qualification process, because, you know, I think Germany played there, uh, the great team. So, yeah. so that's Group D. Group F, um, Malta gets a win over the Ferry Islands. That was, I saw actually quite some extended highlights for that one. That was a huge game. I mean, Malta getting the lead. Then the penalty is given for the Ferry Islands plus a red card, and then the penalty is saved really nicely. Um, then you know Malta only playing with uh, ten men. There's a count counter attack, and suddenly I think it was the goalkeeper who took down the uh, Maltese attacker. Penalty for Malta. Malta makes it two nil on the last, more or less the last action of the game. The Ferry Islands pull one back. Um, I said yesterday the Ferry Islands is the one team that I consider among the small ones to be the biggest one, I think. It's going in other directions. Um, I want to say they played also in the Nations League against each other, so uh, they knew each other. And that seemed to be actually a decent game. I don't know if I would have watched it, but it seemed like a game that I would like to watch. I said that the big game today, and I had no chance of watching it, was Sweden against Romania. Sweden had a 2-0 lead at halftime uh, through Kaysson and Klesson, uh 33rd and 40th. I think the Klesson goal was really nice. The first one by Sweden was a little bit scrappy. I mean, uh, first he doesn't hit the ball, it's still in, on his feet, and then he puts it in. Uh, but Romania pulled one back uh, through Kezeru. Um, it was actually a really nice diving header, a very low diving header. The Romanian attacker didn't have much room uh, to go, put it in, and a low diving header. Really nicely done. Um, I gotta say, the Romanian away shirts in red with the only yellow, there's, there's some blue missing there. Uh, but you know, a yellow versus red matchup is something quite nice, I also have to say. And then the big 
that I saw the last 10, 10 50 minutes of and I just watched the goals so I didn't have seen highlights Spain against Norway what would you expect from that one Spain thoroughly dominating and getting their goals well they were thoroughly do dominating and missing chance after chance after chance I think in the 15th it was uh, Rodrigo Moreno uh, yes uh, Rodrigo in the 16th minute who made the 1-0 after a nice run by Alba who almost you had the feeling the ball is rolling away but you can see he's uh, running for the ball looking up seeing um, Rodrigo put a nice uh, cross in and he just has to slam it home make it 1-0 and then Spain got really really wasteful and they, the game should have been done and dusted by halftime the second half I, I, I then decided to watch this kind of sec sequence between the 60th and the 70 seconds or so on uh, Norway had a throw in that was on the corner kick and another corner kick and from such a corner kick suddenly there was a penalty given um, probably justified but you know uh, have I've seen it not being given as well and Against the run of play, Norway gets the penalty, and King, uh, King, uh, King, it's just King, yes, Joshua King makes it 1 1. And you're thinking, oh, is there a surprise in there? No, Spain came right back, but Morata gets the ball in great position on his head, cannot get it on goal. Um, and fortunately enough, um, just, I think there was another good uh, situation where a Norwegian goalkeeper saved well and you thought, oh, he has a good night. And at that moment, I think it, is, it was Morata going into the box after back, back, bad back pass and he's taken off the feet by the goalkeeper, kind of without really needing to go out uh, that far, I gotta say. Well, Ramos steps up, lobs it into the net, then I saw... I'm sure there were other chances. I saw one by Asensio where he goes into the box and, uh, you know, they want to play it pretty and lobs it over. And so in the stoppage time, Norway actually had chances. Uh, a huge one that uh, went by, but it was also given offside, although it would have been by a hair. I'm not sure if I would count this as an offside. And yeah, Sergio Ramos gets the ball of a huge Norwegian attacker, but, you know, he's better jumping quality, although he's 30 centimeters tiny it was a deserved victory by spain uh, from all that i could tell and see but you know if you don't make your chances you might as well have ended with a 2-2 draw here uh that's that's the stuff you want to avoid so take your chances get them in but you know who am i to talk but that's exactly the feeling that, that i have if spain and it's so typically spain that they want to play not only winning but also beautiful football and then they forget about the main goal of it yeah a little bit the italians had had also a typically italian game in the opening group and i saw most of that i think i i saw the first goal which happened quite early i think to Bar uh, barella in the seventh minute uh shot that was deflected against a really well defending very well organized finnish team that actually had a little bit of a danger as well i mean of course italy um dominate proceedings but you know early one nil goal what do italians do they hold a little bit back and you know um we don't need to put as much effort in now and that uh would have almost cost them especially a second half chance by Puki. um if he can get it on goal, that's a goal. And we are looking at something completely different. And so it was, in the end, um, a counter-attack over Immobile, who took the speed out, out of it, but still was between two defenders. And at the moment that you thought, this is safe, and all the Finnish defenders were lined up, they are all going a little bit to uh, Immobile, and they're forgetting about Moise Kane. Not Moise Kane, Moise Kane, I know now. The... He will make his debut uh, for Italy after having a great showing for Juventus uh, over the past two or so weeks. And yeah, we have a 19-year-old, the first uh, of the year, with, uh, where the birth year is with a two in front, making his debut for Italy and getting the goal, making it 2-0 for Italy and basically killing off the game that way. Uh, and that's, yeah, I don't want to say it because the Italians don't, I have the feeling... 
it used to be that the Italians knew how to kill off a game, they're not as great in it anymore. Yes, at the moment they're playing a lot of possession football, but it was still a little bit unconvincing overall. The ideas were missing very often. Um, it was just a little bit stale and so on. But you know, I'm hopeful that they will get it together. Uh, even Cagliarella got on very, I'm asking myself, he's not a man for the future. I mean, I think he's 36 or something like that. Why bring Cagliarella? You could have gotten uh, someone else uh, there. But on the other side, yeah, I like the the lineup, I think, made overall sense. I would have wished Chiesa not being injured. Because Chiesa, I think, is the player that will move Italy forward. Oh, I'm tired already. So, two more games where I have not seen any highlights. Liechtenstein against Greece. Uh, Greece gets a breakthrough just before halftime. 1-0 uh, through for uh, Tunis. And then Anastasius Donis makes it 2-0 in the 80th. But, you know, winning 2-0 in Liechtenstein, that's actually no small feat, because they, they are also very well organized, and they are no easy wins. So just getting a win there is all that you could, uh, would want to have. And Bosnia against Armenia also looked like a 2-0 win until Armenia in uh, the 90th. Mikhtarian uh, put one back uh, before that it was um, Milosevic in the 80th and Krunic in the 33rd so yeah Bosnia off to a start I think all the the three favorites in this group are off to uh, three points with Italy probably having the hardest test so far but you know they play in Liechtenstein next so you one would expect Italy sitting on six points uh, and with Bosnia against Greece come coming up that's Probably already a little bit of pre-deciding game. Um, if Greece can get a point there, it would look okay. If Bosnia wins, then I think it puts already Bosnia a little bit at an advantage over Greece. But yeah, those were the games for today. I'm gonna go to bed now and sleep. Uh, let me know if you agree with my assessment. As I said, I saw mostly the Italy game and I saw a little bit about the Spain game. And in a fat time I watched highlights that I could get. So yeah, I might watch some more highlights tomorrow. And if I see stuff uh, that I didn't mention, I will edit in tomorrow's video. Um, of course, tomorrow the Netherlands against Germany. Who will win? I really hope the Netherlands, but we'll see about that. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.